Next slide. So for those who are new to Teams, we just wanted to walk you through the logistics of it to make sure you're comfortable if you have a question or need anything. Um, yours might look slightly different than what we have posted here, but this first bar on the left shows the, the how to use the Teams. If you wanna turn your camera on and off or your mic on and off, those buttons are up there. If you wanna turn on live captions, there's the three little dots that's under more and then there's turn on live captions there as well and please let us know if you're having any issues with the presentation and we can help you all right uh, i can do the introductions part i'm nick fisher project manager for ramsey county uh here tonight uh, presenting will be lindsay lawrence from tkda and cassie pinta uh they're going to be talking about design and project management and Micah Anders and Samantha McKinney will be talking about uh, more of our engagement side of things. Then I'll toss it back to Lindsay. Talk about the agenda. Thanks, Nick. So again, I'm Lindsay Lawrence with TKDA. Um, you can see on your screen just an overview of a pretty uh, basic agenda. We'll go over project overview, review existing conditions, some of the next steps. And then like Sam said, we'll open it up to uh, questions or just an open discussion. Next slide, please, Cassie. So uh, project overview, uh, you can see uh, a map on your screen right now. So these are the project limits on the far left is Maryland. Um, and I guess I'll point out that the north is to your right. So. Um, and with that, so Maryland's on your left, Arlington's kind of in the middle, Wheelock's on the far right. So from Maryland to Arlington, the plan is to fully reconstruct Jackson Street. And then from Arlington to Wheelock, uh, we will be uh, incorporating some new pedestrian amenities. And with that, move to the next slide, please. So uh, at the beginning of the project, um, Nick and uh, the design team here set some project goals. So We'd like to improve pedestrian and bicycle safety and access, complete the Troutbrook Trail gap, uh, replace and improve aging infrastructure, traffic calming measures, and then maintain the long-term goals of the stakeholders. So on the next slides, we'll go into a little more detail. So uh, you can see, here's a snapshot of one of the bridges along Jackson between Maryland and Arlington. Um, it has not great pedestrian access right now. You can see there's a sidewalk on bridges, but it's not really continuous throughout the corridor. So we'll try to improve that um, along Jackson Street here. And then if you are a user of the Trout Book Trail, um, you'll notice that there is a gap. So the um, there's the Trout Book Sanctuary right uh, close to the Maryland Jackson uh, intersection right where Cassie's pointing there. And then uh, off up north of Arlington, it, the Trout Trail continues. And so there's a gap along Jackson Street. So we're looking to um, add a trail along that section to close that gap. Next slide. Okay. And then between Maryland and Arlington are two aging bridges uh, that go over railroad um, corridors. And so those structures um, are aging and just are not, uh, uh, I guess, they're load posted. And so in, in order to get bus routes back on the street or whatever, or get uh, some heavy sem semis into that industrial area, um, we're looking to improve those. And then um, you can see, this is kind of a wide out view, but the uh, railings and barriers are definitely in need of some Im safety improvements. And then the bridge over the BNSF um, crossing, which is the north structure, does have uh, inadequate vertical clearance right now. So we'll be looking to improve that. Uh, next slide. And then just traffic calming measures. So we know uh, the roadway right now is relatively wide for the uh, lanes that are, are designated on here and it's not great for pedestrians or bicyclists. So we'll be um, adding some traffic calming measures, whether that's striping or bump outs or those are things we'll be looking into as we move this project along. 
And then uh, we know this project has many stakeholders. So there's the residents who live right here or adjacent to the project. There's um, uh, a lot of industry or commercial businesses along this route. And then there's just the, the pedestrian users that either go through this corridor or use it on a, on a daily basis. So we're looking to um, maintain those goals of all the stakeholders. So uh, um, yeah, I guess with that, uh, next slide. So schedule. Um, we're working through uh, some of the design alternatives right now, and uh, we've laid out some of the engineering constraints, which Cassie will go through here uh, shortly. Um, and then this fall, we'll be doing an environmental site assessment and moving into preliminary design. Um, as we move into 23, we'll be finishing our design. Um, and then construction right now is planned for 2026. Um, and depending how on how that scope kind of plays out on this project, some of those elements could be moved to an earlier date. Um, but right now, everything is planned for 2026. So with that, I believe Cassie will take over and kind of review some of the existing conditions. Right. So to start off, uh, this is a map of the project extends uh, starting at Maryland Avenue down at the south and going all the way north to Wheelock. We have some um, uh, the McDonough residential neighborhood over to the east and some industrial south of Arlington and the trails as mentioned earlier they connect uh, down here at Maryland. There's a gap along here and it starts up again um, just north of Arlington and there's also a pathway on Wheelock that we'd like to be able to connect to. Um, zooming in close to Maryland, there is a bus route that goes up Jackson, but it doesn't continue through our project limits, mainly because the bridges that were mentioned earlier um, are weight restricted because of the oldness uh, of them. So potentially with this project, there might be some improvements to the bus routes through here. And there's a trail brook regional trail extension through here and overall we have some utilities that are along the east side. Uh, if you were to look, this is near Maryland looking north when you can see that we have some sidewalks along here, but they don't continue uh, much farther beyond this intersection. Um, so people are either using the grass boulevard or they're walking in the road um, and we have a sign here for the bridges that there are certain weight restrictions on there. And then this slide, very similar to the slide that we just saw, but it kind of shows some dimensions on how the driving lanes are 12 foot wide with eight foot shoulders. And then we have sidewalk on one side. Overall through this entire segment from Maryland to Arlington, the county uh, has public right of way of 66 feet wide. Um, just north of that section, this is near the uh, BNSF railroad uh, tracks, and we have this bridge here. And as mentioned earlier, there is some vertical clearance issues here, along with the weight restrictions that we can fix up with this project. Uh, this is the perspective from the bridge. Um, there is sidewalk sidewalk shelf on it, but it just goes to grass. You can kind of see the trail or tracks below. Uh, this segment is north of Arlington, kind of near the McDonough neighborhood. I just wanted to showcase what it looks like. Um, you know, on the east side, there's a nice continuous sidewalk, but the west side, it's the sidewalk doesn't continue through. Um, it just sort of stops in various spots, um, which is not convenient for People in wheelchairs or bikes, they have to either navigate this grass or go on the shoulder. The lanes through here are a little smaller, um, but they are 11 foot lanes and nine foot shoulders. There is a segment just north of Arlington that has space for parking. It's about 400 feet long. And then we're showcasing that sidewalk that's near the McDonough neighborhood. And this area, very similar to the first half, but it is only 65 feet of space for improvements. 
Uh, and then I'll let Lindsay go back. So next steps in the project. So we're going to continue uh, community engagement. Our, this is our first step. So we're looking for some input from the public um, and we'll I'll be taking those comments into consideration as we move into concept development, um, which we have done already um, on the engineering side. So we've considered all the engineering constraints that uh, Cassie kind of went through. Um, and then, like I noted earlier, we'll move into environmental review. Um, and then we're hoping to present um, some concepts back to the public and have a, another open house or some other forum um, in November. And then we'll, we'll be moving into uh, preliminary and final design um, to get the project um, started. And then with that, I'm gonna uh, switch it over to Nick so he can talk about bullet number six there. So what we've been talking about is mostly a reconstruction of Jackson Street between uh, Arlington and Maryland. However, uh, between Arlington and uh, Larpenter, it's still a pretty rough surface roadway, but it is all kind of an asphalt surface. Um, so we didn't want to wait till 2026 to resurface that. So this year we're going to come in and grind off the first inch or two and then put a new asphalt surface down between uh, Arlington and Larpenter. Uh, there is some work out there now. They're doing some sidewalk work uh, at the at the pedestrian ramps at each of the corners, and they're doing some catch basin work out there now. And then the resurfacing will be kind of probably mid October. Um, and then with that, we'll stripe in the bike lanes. Uh, right now, it's kind of a striped shoulder, so we'll put some bike symbols out there and try and designate the roadway a little more, uh, tighten up the lanes out there. So. That's what's coming in the future here very soon. So with that, that's all we have for the presentation. So we're going to open it up to any questions that anybody has. So you can feel free to unmute yourself and ask it, or you can type it into the chat, or however you feel appropriate. Sam, can you unmute Linda? Uh, yes, give me a second. I don't know if I can actually unmute. I think you have to do it yourself. It's up at the top of your screen. There's a little microphone that says mic. It's at the bottom. There you go. We can hear you. Is yours at the bottom? Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm looking at <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, I just two points um, when you were going over sort of the existing conditions and that, but to keep in mind, um, in terms of with the traffic calming and that, because of the businesses that are on that stretch of the street between Arlington and Maryland, there's a lot of truck and semi and school buses and all of that that go through there. And to narrow it too much, you need to kind of consider they're going to need uh, enough room for their turning radius. But also, and this has been an issue for years and they're still doing it, even though they're not supposed to have the weight going over the bridge right now, they still are. Plus, they park on Jackson Street to load and unload all the time. Um, the semis are parking there, loading and unloading the cars from all those junkyards. And you've, you've got to have enough room to be able to swing around them. <laughs> I was just going to interrupt you quickly. It, are they parking on the, on the shoulder? Or are they actually parking in the lane that you totally have to drive into the opposing lane to get around? Both. The, there's both. And because okay. they're so big, they, they have, the shoulder doesn't work because there's curb there. Mm -hmm. So they're actually taking up a lane pretty much what they're doing right now. And I know it's posted and all that, but they still do it. And I think it's on their conditions for a lot of their licenses too, but they still do it. You come over that um, bridge and there they are kind of lined up. Um, and, and it's different times of the day. And that's also the other thing in 
I know you mentioned the utility poles and things on the east side of the street um, in terms of a trail area. Um, the east side also has, it's either seven or eight ingress egress for businesses, whereas the west side has two plus that one alley closer to Maryland. Um, so just, I didn't think you wanted to move utility poles, do you? <laughs> so that's the discussion probably at the next meeting. We'll talk about okay. kind of what side of the road uh, this okay. trail wants to be on. And Linda, you're absolutely right. Like the west side is better because there's less utilities and there is less um, driveways. Okay. So the main goal would be to somehow get the trail underneath the one of the bridges yeah. and then scoot it along the west side. Because of course, the continues to the north on the west side. So you got to get them across the street anyway. Yeah, yeah. I so just, that, yeah, the parking, the parking thing, I, I know they've always talked about narrowing the roadway a bit um, for traffic calming and that. And in order to fit your bike lanes and everything else on there. Um, but just be aware that they're always loading and unloading semis. I guess I have a follow-up question for you. Would you say that they're parking um, all the way from those bridges all the way up to Arlington or in between the two bridges or just north of the bridges? Um, the most common area is after the second bridge when you get to um, the second junkyard going north. You know, you have the one by Norpak Road. Mm -hmm. And then you have, I think they're both insurance auto auction. But then you have another one after you go over the second bridge, which would have the um, BNSF North line running under mm -hmm. it. Um, it's typically there where there can be, okay. today I went through and there were two big, long um, car haulers, the, the semis parked along there and they were, they load and unload. So that's kind of a, that's probably the worst one. But, but a lot of those other businesses for going further north also have a lot of semi and large truck traffic going in and out of their their ingress egress okay that's helpful thank you so so linda how many years have you been working on this trout book trail connection well look how old i am now <laughs> were you were you like um, young like Lindsay, and when you started <laughs> yes pretty much <laughs> no um i probably we started around 1991 trying to look at the nature sanctuary aspect and 2009 was when we asked the county to put the permanent traffic lights at Arlington and Jackson because we thought there might be an opportunity of road work and we wanted to have that in place to make it look better and more promising. So when you did the detour for the Rice Street Bridge and put the temporaries that's when we asked for the um, traffic count so that uh, we could get those permanent because we knew at some point we might need to have signals at that intersection for the trail but we were just planning for any option you know we like the idea of the spur and the trestle but um, that could be maybe never you know <laughs> It, it could be it could be 30 years it could be never so we just need to get the gap and we need to get people off the streets when they walk in the winter because they come over those bridges at night in the street and you don't see them it's really dangerous for the people walking and bike lanes on the street there's a lot of little kids at mcdonough and to get to the nature trail, we'd feel a lot better if they were on an off street path. Yep, I, I agree completely. All your points are, are good points, Linda. So, yep, about 1991 or so, the neighborhood started 
looking into it. So mm -hmm. there's still a few of us here. And that moved away and they still keep their finger on it to make sure it's getting done. Well, we're working on it. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Anything else, Linda? No, thank you. That's okay. fine. I think the only other person on the line who's not part of the project team is Connie. I guess I'll open it up to you if you have any questions. We can unmute you if you need help with that. And that might be Connie Bernardi from our active living Ramsey County team. Okay. If that's the same Connie I'm thinking of. All right. I, I'm going to take that as no comments or questions. Um, and if you, uh, Linda or Connie, if you come up with anything else, um, we've got the uh, the link to the project site there listed on the screen. Um, and part of, when you click on that link, you can get to an interactive comment map too. So you can leave uh, comments, but we've obviously recorded this meeting and taken some notes from your comments, Linda. But if you think of anything outside of this meeting, please go to that and uh, leave us some comments to consider for the project. And then also listed there is Nick Fisher's contact information. If you need anything else project related, he'd be happy to answer those for you. So, um, anything else? Anyone? Okay. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming.